द मास्टर ऑफ द वर्क द मास्टर एंड मूवर ऑफ आर वर्क इज द वन द यूनिवर्सल एंड सुप्रीम द इटर्नल एंड द इनफाइनाइट ही इज द ट्रांसेंडेंट अनोन और अनुएबल एब्सोल्यूट द अनएक्सप्रेस्ड एंड अनमैनिफेस्टेड इनफेबल अब आवर्स but he is also the self of all beings the master of all worlds transcending all worlds the light and the guide the all beautiful and all blissful the beloved and the lover he is the cosmic spirit and all this creative energy around us he is the immanent within us all that is is he and he is the more than all that is and we ourselves do we know it not our being of his being force of his force conscious with a consciousness derived from his even our mortal existence is made out of his substance and there is an immortal within us that is a spark of the light and bliss that are forever no matter whether by knowledge works love or any other means to become aware of this truth of our being to realize it to make it effective here or elsewhere is the object of all yoga but the passage is long and the labor arduous before we can look upon him with eyes that see true and still longer and more arduous must be our endeavor if we would rebuild ourselves in his true image the master of the work does not reveal himself at once to the seeker always it is his power that acts behind the veil but it is manifest only when we renounce the egoism of the worker and its direct movement increases in proportion as that renunciation becomes more and more concrete only when our surrender to his divine shakti is absolute shall we have the right to live in his absolute presence and only then can we see our work through itself naturally completely and simply into the mold of the divine will there must therefore be stages and gradations in our approach to this perfection as there are the progress towards all other perfection on any plane of nature the vision of the full glory may come to us before suddenly or slowly once or often but until the foundation is complete it is a summary and concentrated not a durable and all enveloping experience not a lasting presence the amplitudes the infinite contents of the divine realize revelation come afterwards and unroll gradually their power and their significance or even the steady vision can be there on the summits of our nature but the perfect response of the lower members comes only by decrease in all yogas the first requisites are faith and patience the ardors of the heart and the violences of the eager will 
that seek to take the kingdom of heaven by storm can have miserable reactions if they disdain to support their vehemence on these humbler and quieter auxiliaries. And in the long and difficult integral yoga, there must be an integral faith and an unshakable patience. It is difficult to acquire or to practice this faith and steadfastness on the rough and narrow path of yoga because of the impatience of both heart and mind and the eager but faltering wheel of our rajasic nature. The vital nature of man hungers always for the fruit of its labor and if the fruit appears to be denied or long delayed, he loses faith in the ideal and in the guidance. For his mind judges always by the appearance of things, since that is the first ingrained habit of the intellectual reason in which he so inordinately trusts. Nothing is easier for us than to accuse God in our hearts when we suffer long or stumble in the darkness or to abjure the ideal that we have set before us. For we say, I have trusted to the highest and I am betrayed into suffering and sin and error. Or else, I have staked my whole life on an idea which the stern facts of experience contradict and discourage. It would have been better to be as other men are who accept their limitations and walk on the firm ground of normal experience. In such moments, and they are sometimes frequent and long, all the higher experience is forgotten and the heart concentrates itself in its own bitterness. It is in these dark passages that it is possible to fall for good or to turn back from the divine labor. If one has walked long and steadily in the path, the faith of the heart will remain under the fiercest adverse pressure. Even if it is concealed or apparently overborne, it will take the first opportunity to re-emerge. For something higher than either heart or intellect upholds it in spite of the worst stumblings and through the most prolonged failure. But even to the experienced sadhaka, such falterings or overcloudings bring a retardation of his progress, and they are exceedingly dangerous to the novice. It is therefore necessary from the beginning to understand and to accept the arduous difficulty of the path and to feel the need of a faith which to the intellect may seem blind but yet is wiser than our reasoning intelligence. For this faith is a support from above. It is the brilliant shadow thrown by a secret light that exceeds the intellect and its data. It is the heart of a hidden knowledge that is not at the mercy of immediate appearances. Our faith, persevering, will be justified in its works and will be lifted and transfigured at last into the self-revelation of a divine knowledge. Always we must adhere to the injunction of the Gita. Yoga must be continually applied with a heart free from Respond and sinking. Always we must repeat to the doubting intellect the promise of the Master. I'll surely deliver thee from all sin and evil. Do not grieve. At the end, the flickerings of faith will cease. For we shall see his face and feel always the Divine Presence.